I'll start with that. Another simple machine. Let's see, we had levers uh, where it tips. And so you can move it up and down a big distance. But if you have a big lever arm, I mean, that'll make you move more distance. It's easier. That's not a science term. The force is easier, is less. But you move it over a longer distance. Because you guys all know now, work is force times distance. On the other end, it covers less distance. Thus, you can get more force out. So simple machines can magnify force. They can't multiply or magnify energy because you would still be putting the same amount of work in. The work you do over here is the same work done over here. But you can make it so it's possible. The force is less. Maybe you can't physically lift this on its own. But if you use a lever, you can use less force and just do it longer. Uh, inclines and ramps, similar thing. Straight up or down the incline. Screws, inclines wrapped around on themselves. Uh, wheel and axles are a little different, but you know what that is. Here's an axle. <laughs> here's a wheel. They kind of work. Uh, here's a similar one. Here's a wheel on an axle. Uh, we didn't discuss it as much, but you, you can understand this. Friction's a force, and it's trying to slow the wheel down. When you try to slide something, ugh, you got a lot of friction, and it resists you. Thus, to move that, you have to push harder than if there weren't friction. So a wheel and an axle is a way to minimize friction. Because if a wheel is just sliding along like this, there's friction. But if it's rolling, there's less friction between the wheel and the surface. Can you see that a little bit? You, you could look at, say, the, uh, where the um, brain lapse valve is at. When it's in, down at the ground now, it's just resting. It's not trying to slide and move around. So it doesn't waste as much energy. There's less frictional force. That's the idea behind a wheel and axle. And you know that because it's a lot easier to ride your bike than drag it. <laughs> Here's another use we used to have. Gears. We use gears everywhere. Now, of course, we'd automate this, right? We'd plug it in and use electricity to drive it. But you could turn a wheel on an axle and then use gears to increase or decrease the speed. And, you know, and you whip up your omelet. I think we have one in there. <laughs> Yeah, I found this at a thrift store and grabbed it for this demo. <laughs> People use it for gear ratios also. But anyway, so there's wheels and axles. Uh, pulleys. A pulley, one, a simple basic pulley, just redirects the direction of a force. Simple machines can do that because maybe you can't pull one way, but you could pull another way. So you can use a pulley. You know, if you just got a wheel and it, you got a big weight over here, Instead of lifting it up, you can go around the pulley and pull down on it. That one actually doesn't multiply the force. You'd have to pull down with the same force that the Earth's pulling it down here. So you'd have to counter its weight. Its weight's down, you'd have to pull up. But you're redirecting it over here so you can pull down. That's a simple pulley. But if you arrange them differently, like in a block and tackle, or you loop a couple times, or there's two pulleys, then you can get mechanical advantage. And this is my demo to show that. For this, I need three volunteers. How about two guys? Two guys, help me out. All right, thank you. Yeah, well, I guess they don't want to volunteer. Come on down. All right. So I'm going to have one of you hold this handle and the other hold the other handle. And then your job is kind of like tug of war. You're going to try to keep this thing pulled apart. But I need somebody to pull on here. All right. So it's a competition between the uh, boys and you. Yes. <laughs> now you can see before you start pulling, you're going to pull with a certain force. 
But what's, but what's neat is it goes around here and it redirects to this one. So this is going to pull with the same force. But then it redirects over there and back here. It's pulling with that force. And again, force. And you can see there's more than one here. So that can magnify the force. So they're going to feel more force than you're pulling with. Go for it. Come on, she's winning. You, you can go like this, Chandelier, <laughs> so you don't run out of room. So it's hard. Now, come on, pull apart so she has to come forward a little. <laughs> Very good. All right, ease up. <laughs> if you'll gently set that on the table so it doesn't tangle. Thank you for helping. I love pulleys. I've always loved block and tackles. One of my favorite knots is uh, the trucker's hitch. It's basically you make a loop and you come down and around like a pulley. Back on this one is another pulley. And you get mechanical advantage that way. Yeah, right? the, the amazing thing, I am not a strong person. I, you, know, I cannot... You must be. <laughs> and that's the whole point of a simple machine, usually. It's something like this that you could never pull apart. Well, rig it up like this, you can use less force. But, did you notice you moved a lot further than they did? Mm -hmm. You were exerting the same amount of work as they were to move that same dif distance. It was just it was less force for you than it was for them. I've seen people pull out cars this way, you know, hooking up to a tree trunk or something. So simple machines are cool. They make our lives easier. They can either uh, change the distance or the force. All right. Now, last thing about machines and energy. And that's efficiency. It's defined as, you know, you want to say how efficient is a machine? Your car, or refrigerator or something. Well, there's an easy way to do that. The useful, and that matters when you're talking about thermodynamics, energy output. You're going to get so much out of this machine. The machine can do so much work, but it takes energy to do it, to run the machine, total energy input. So you need E out, E in, not E or, for all you poo fans out there. That's all there is to it. You can figure out... Uh, how efficient something is. It's a percentage because energy is in joules, so the joules cancel. This is, has no uh, units. It's just a percentage. So, you know, if you put a thousand joules in to run the machine, you know, you plug it in, or horsepower, and you figure it out, or something. There's energy. And you get a thousand joules out, it's 100% efficient. There's no machine in real life like that. One of the laws of thermodynamics is that no machine is 100% efficient. Because some of this energy in trying to do that work output is converted to unuseful heat, unuseful energy, usually in the form of heat. And we're not good at uh, recycling waste heat. But let's say it's a, a really good machine. You might get 50% out. You can get half of what you put in. A lot of machines that we have are even less efficient than this. But that's all you do with efficiency. You could do a similar thing just comparing the energy. Remember we dropped many, ball, many balls. And if it has gravitational potential energy initially, and then it goes and bounces, and it only gets this high, It's like this is what comes out, what's left over. This is what you started with. So you could just do a ratio of this to this, the energy out versus the energy in, and have an idea of how efficiently this ball bounces. And so far, we don't know of any ball that it bounces 100% efficiently. It never comes right back up to where it started. 
some super bouncy balls try really hard. But. And our, uh, our sad but really happy ball, 0% efficient. None of, it, none of the energy you started with does it end up back with. It all gets converted to unuseful energy, sound and heat. It doesn't come back up at all. Does that make sense? Straightforward? Well, let's check your understanding. Clicker time. I got some questions. We'll see how we're doing. Yeah, let's. <laughs> I want 16. Where's my cursor? There it is. I wanted to ask you this one too. So well, let's see. Info's up. You can see it. Pulling's open. Basically, two, two planes at different speeds. I want you to, how does the kinetic energy of those two compare? You know one is three times as fast as the other, but what does that mean about kinetic energy? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Meh. Most of you think D more than four times. You're correct. That one is remembering this. Kinetic energy is proportional to the velocity squared. So if you triple the velocity, it's going three times as fast, it's going to have three squared, or nine times the kinetic energy. Nine times, which is definitely more than four. Questions? It also means it'll take nine times as much energy to stop it. So if you did work on the, on the airplane to stop it, you know, the brakes, they would have to apply a, a, a force for nine, if, you know, if the brakes can apply a consistent force, no matter how fast it's going, let's say the force of stopping is consistent, it would take nine times the distance to stop. Remember that next time you're speeding. Just by tripling your speed, doesn't mean you can stop in the same distance or even three times the distance. It'll take you nine times the distance to stop for the same braking force. All righty. What was the next one? How about this then? Dog and a mouse. This time they have the same kinetic energy. Is one of them faster? Which one? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Me. Majority has B, the mouse. Very good. If they have the same kinetic energy.
but a dog is bigger than a mouse. Hopefully. <laughs> That's one scary mouse or one puny looking dog. So the velocity here would have to be smaller to have the same amount of energy. So, if they both have the same kinetic energy, the smaller one is moving faster. Does that make sense? Remember this, we're going to get to, uh, well, I'll revisit it, but in thermodynamics we talk about the gas particles and how they're jiggling around because they have a temperature as a measure of how fast they're going. It's their average kinetic energy. I'll remind you that they kind of have the same average kinetic energy. But what if one molecule is, or atom is bigger than another one? It's just like this. A dog and a mouse have the same kinetic energy, but the smaller one it will be moving faster. So the upshot there is just by knowing something's temperature and how big it is, you can, you can know how fast it's moving. All righty. Uh, 32. Go. I wish I understood that. Why, it's just you. <laughs> I, I know it says you can't, polling wasn't open, but. It's all right, you got time. Most people haven't answered yet. So here's a pulley system. You're trying to lift 80 newtons, but you only have to exert 20 newtons. So you can see that magnifying, multiplying effect. All right, well, if you move for every meter that you pull on the rope with less force, how far does the 80 newton crate actually move? I'll even give you a clue. What's the same on both sides here? The side you're pulling on and the side the crate's on. What's going to be the same? What's conserved? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Most of you want C, 25 centimeters. Very good, very good. The work is the same on both sides. That's what a machine does. You can't multiply energy. Energy is conserved. So again, you have some force over here for less distance, less force, more distance. Let's see. One of the forces is 80 newtons, the other is 20 newtons. That's a ratio of one to four. So one is four times heavier than the other. Well, that means the distance ratio has got to be in four too, one to four, in the opposite direction to keep the energy conserved. So if you pull a meter, the crate's going to move four times less that, 25 centimeters, or a quarter of a meter. Questions? All right. Last one on this. Go. Were you responseware also? Do you use responseware? Yeah. Does it keep kicking you out? Yeah, I didn't get the first few questions. 
We need to contact turning. I mean, that's not right. There yeah, we, you guys both put in tickets. I'll call them too. We need to. This is that's not good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Meh. Overwhelming 80% think it's 30%? You're correct. You, you do a thousand joules of work on a car jack. That's the input. You can cause the car to raise up and gain 300 joules of gravitational potential energy. That's the output. So you put in a thousand, you only get 300 out. 300 over a thousand is 30%. So it's a 30% efficient machine. Questions? All right, I intend to ask you another question later in lecture, but not at the moment. So, projectile motion. I'm going to start out with this big demo. I got a big uh, bullet here. And I'm going to load it into this cannon. And this is an old propane tank. It's, we're going to use fill it full of compressed air. And then there's a quick release valve to let all that air out. It's going to push on the bullet. You apply a force to a mass, it accelerates. Acceleration is a change in velocity. That'll speed the bullet up, and it'll shoot out at some muzzle velocity. When it hits uh, this, it's an electromagnet that will trip what's hanging over there. So I'm going to grab a monkey, and we're going to shoot it. This is a uh, physicist. This has been like a classic problem. There you go, monkey. You can. Whoops. There you go. Yeah. So the, the hunter sees a monkey in the uh, tree. And he turns around, scaredy cat. And so he aims right at the monkey. But the monkey is clever. As soon as he sees the, the uh, hunter shoot and fire, as soon as the bullet's out, he's going to let go of the branch because he doesn't want to get shot. So we're, we can reproduce that here. Our uh, air cannon is the hunter, and he's aimed right at the monkey. But as soon as the bullet comes out, the monkey drops. And I want to ask you what will happen. And I'm going to make you vote, or ask you to vote. Uh, usually I just hand ask these, but I made a question up here, you know. What do you think the bullet will do? Pulling's open. Is the monkey going to drop below the bullet and so the bullet goes over the monkey? Will it go under the monkey? Or maybe it'll hit the monkey. What do you think? While you guys decide, I'll uh, fill up the air cannon. Pressurized. How's the vote? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, to get the rest of you to vote. 3, 2, 1. We got less of you. You want to vote? Last chance. Okay. All right. Most of you think it'll hit the monkey. And the next, you think it'll go above. Why do you think it'll hit the monkey?
The acceleration in the y direction is the same. That's true. And what, what's the value? Yeah, 9.8 meters per second per second. What, you want to add to that? Same? Well, that's true. The Earth does pull on both of them the same. What's different about the two? The size, that's true. The masses are different. Velocity. This one also has a horizontal velocity. But the Earth will make it have a vertical velocity as soon as it comes out. Where that one will just have a vertical velocity. And that could affect things. Shall we do it and see what happens? Well, of course. All right. You guys ready? One, two, three. Boom. Right in the back of the head. So it did hit. Good, good job. And that's what is happening. You're, you are absolutely right. Both of these fall at the same rate. We've seen that before. And to review, there was a homework question. They're different mass. They have different weights. The Earth pulls on them with different forces. But it causes them to accelerate at the same rate vertically. So this one's going this like this. This one's moving this way, but it's also falling. And so it's like, ka-chum, 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 ka-chum. And eventually, if this can make it over there before he hits the ground or clears the table, it'll hit it. What happens if I shoot faster? It'll go above? It'll hit sooner. Excuse me, because they've had less time to fall. So this one's still coming over, but it's coming over quick, more quickly, so they have had less time to fall. If this was going slower, boom, it could fall on them. But they should still hit, because vertically they fall together in sync. Let's do it one other way. Let's reload. And this time we'll get something not as smart as a monkey. Well, we're the you. You know, you got to make fun of them, I guess. It's not as critical now because, you know, we, we don't play them as often. But You know what happens in this case, so let's try it differently. Now what will happen? You want to re-vote? Should we? No responses. What? <laughs> I'm going to have you re-vote just because I want it to stop wiggling so we can't use that as an excuse. What the heck? Give you another point. Yeah, vote again. What do you think will happen this time? I'll put some air in it. Well, we know your answer then. Oh, most of you are done. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All righty. Even more of you think it'll still hit. Okay. Let's find out. See, that's great. See, even when uh, I can't get volunteers, or you want to be nice? See, you all participate. Thanks. Now we know. Okay, are you ready, Cosmo? Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Boom! Still got him. <laughs> Let's raise this up just so you guys can see me a little better. That works. So, the idea there 
is they still have the same vertical acceleration. But this one's going up first. Remember, we've tossed balls up and they come back down. The acceleration the whole time is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, now, and now. So as it goes up, it feels the force of its weight pulling it down. The earth is tugging on it, trying to accelerate it down. At the same rate, Cosmo is. But he starts higher, so he has more time to fall while this one's going up and down. Also, you can think of it this way. If gravity, we could turn off gravity, where would the bullet end up? Right where Cosmo started, right? Because there's nothing to pull it down. And where would Cosmo end up? It would stay there because there's nothing to pull him down. We would all be floating too, right? That's what happens when you do projectile motion. If you shot it and there wasn't gravity, it would end up over there. And so how far will it have fallen after a certain amount of time? As if it was dropped from over there. That's why they still hit each other. So this two-dimensional uh, two motion stuff with projectile motion, so a lot of people get comp confused by it. I say just separate them. Two-dimensional motion is just two separate one-dimensional problems. You work, you work it in the horizontal direction, figure out what's going in the vertical direction. And then you play that component game. You know, because if, if something is go, is go, has a horizontal velocity and a vertical velocity, you know which way it's going to go, right? Point. Yeah, it's going to go that way. What if it's going more horizontally than it is vertically? Now which way will it go? Yeah, more horizontal, but down a little. That's the game we're playing. But you just treat the... Uh, Everything we've learned about motion and forces is true horizontally and it's true vertically. And we usually just separate the two, solve them, and then see where it ends up. Doing them together gets confusing. So my tip to you is you're going to have to try to keep them separate. Thus, when you use 9.8 meters per second squared, that's the acceleration of things vertically. Don't use that as the acceleration horizontally. <laughs> All right, Cosmo. Let's do a similar one. Problem, you can't see the clock. Okay. This shoots a ball up vertically, like this. I turn it on, this little ball here. I compress the spring. I do work. I exerted a force for this distance. Where'd that energy go? It's now stored elastically as potential energy in the spring. When uh, a little sensor back here, goes past this, or I just insert this in there, then it's released and that potential energy is turned into kinetic energy and it'll shoot the ball straight up like this. So I'm going to push this this way and when it gets here, it's going to shoot the ball straight up. What will happen? Where will the ball land? If I push it like this, and it shot straight up, where will the ball land? Behind the cart, in the cart, or in front of the cart? I won't do the clicker question this time. Here, just, we'll see how you participate. Who thinks it'll land in the, in the cup? Who thinks it'll land behind the cup? <laughs> Forgot I cocked it. <laughs> in front? All right, we got one vote there. All right, let's recock. And this time I won't catch it. <laughs> it lands in the cup. Very good. So when it's at this point, what velocity does the ball have? Show me with you know some vectors. Point. It has horizontal velocity? Yeah. Yeah, well, as soon as it's shot. It has up? Yeah, it has an up. And the cart is, was going this way. Remember, it's inertia. It's riding with the cart. Things in motion want to stay in motion. So it already has a horizontal velocity. It doesn't disappear just because it leaves the truck, the cart. So yeah, it's shot up 
and it's already going over. So the ball ends up going that way. And horizontally, its speed doesn't change, does it, in the air? There's nothing in the air to slow it down. Air resistance is minimal in this case. So it stays, things in motion want to stay in motion. It maintains that horizontal velocity, right? Because of inertia. Well, that's the same horizontal velocity the cart has. So horizontally, they stay together while its vertical velocity changes. And that works even if you go quickly. Let's see if I can pull it off today. It's like an evil Knievel jump or something. You ready? Ta-da! Thank you, thank you. And last but not least, I'm going to do it one other way for you. Maybe one of these ways it'll drive home and you'll remember better. This is a spring-loaded contraption. I can cock the spring and then release it. I'm going to put one of these cubes in the front so it'll get knocked horizontally. But I have another one with a hole in it that fits over this end. And it'll be like pulling the tablecloth out from underneath the, the silverware. When the, when the post goes that way, it'll leave the block and it'll fall straight down. So, basically this allows us to shoot one projectile horizontally at the same time we drop a second cube. There we are. Let's see what happens. So, when I release it, who will hit the table first? Now you're getting it. Ready? So they did. You could hear them hit at the same time. I know that happens fast. And you're all convinced. Let's do it one more time. Doesn't take that long. Are you ready? Listen for it, too. Sure enough. Not your clicker. I want to show you an animation. All right. This little ball, if gravity is on, you know what will happen. Like, remind yourself, this is going to fall. It's just being dropped. And it's going to record the positions every second, let's say. How do you think the positions will, will compare to each other? Will they be equally spaced? Great, closer together at the beginning? Closer together at the end? Closer at the end? It'll be accelerating downward. So it's going to increase speed. So every second it's going to go faster and faster and faster. And so it's going to cover more distance each second. You can kind of see that with this animation. Does that make sense? Now, let's shoot something horizontally. Um, let's go faster. Let's turn gravity off. Play. If you just throw something horizontally without gravity, It's equally spaced. Why? No acceleration. No change in velocity. Things in motion stay in motion at the same speed unless or until something acts on it. We turn gravity off in this case. Well, let's do them at the same time. Let's turn gravity on and hit shoot it horizontally. And it's just like this thing that we did the simultaneous ball drop. Do it again. Boom, they hit the ground at the same time. Notice vertically, they fall the same distance every second. Here to here. Here to here. Here to here. You get the idea. That's because vertically they're doing something independent. 
than they are horizontally. But notice horizontally, they're still the same distance apart. You move horizontally the same because you're going, what is it, 14 meters per second. That doesn't change horizontally. Does that help? So, let's shoot something at an angle. I have this set. I'm going to shoot it at 63 meters per second. That's this vector. This is 63 meters per second. But here's the components, and it shows you the whole trip. You can see there's more horizontally, I mean vertically, upwards, than there is horizontally. So it'll go higher than it goes horizontal. This is at a 60 degree angle. This is 60 degrees. So we shoot it. Watch what happens to those two components, how they change. It brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? So vertically, it decreases, decreases, just like throwing the ball up, up, zero velocity, changes direction, and starts speeding up back down because it's being accelerated downward the whole time. But there's no acceleration horizontally, and look at it again. The horizontal component doesn't change. Why would it? No force is acting on it horizontally. All right, that's 60 degrees. What do you think will happen if I change it to 30 degrees? That went, what, 350 meters. Can you see that? That's how far it would go. What do you think will happen if I change it to 30 degrees? Can you see now the horizontal component's bigger? The vertical's smaller. It'll spend less time in the air. Do you think it'll go as far, less, farther? Further? Say, say that again. It'll go further, but not as high. Because it's going faster horizontally. Okay. Any other votes? The first year was 60 degrees. This was twice this angle. Now we're half that angle at 30. First time it went over to here at 350. We're wondering what will happen now. It won't go as high, definitely, but it's going faster sideways. See how the components still change similarly? Horizontal doesn't change, but vertical did. Ah, it goes the same. It gets there quicker because it, it's going sideways faster, but it didn't go as high. So it spends less time in the air. So if air resistance were a factor, the 60 degree one would be slowed down more because it spends more time in the air. But that's that component game, you know, the two comp components, horizontal or vertical. Since I have this up, I want to show you this animation. You can shoot things faster and faster. This is like a cannonball on top of a big mountain. This is not to scale. <laughs> so if it's going really slowly and you fire, you can see it, you know, it just lands what, like you'd think. Let's reload and let's shoot at least a little faster. Three kilometers a second. Now that's fast. Kilometers a second. Boom. Things still fall, just like we've seen with the bullet. We saw with the, the, the ball on the cart. We're just going a whole lot faster now. It still falls because gravity's pulling it down. The neat thing about this animation is that you can see that the earth curves also. The, the earth is not flat. So if we uh, go a little faster, it's still, still falling, 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 but it makes it further around the world, doesn't it? Because it's like the earth is curving out from underneath it. It's trying to fall and hit the ground, but the ground is curving away from it. So what happens if you go fast enough? Exactly. You can go into orbit. So it's always in fall, free fall. It's constantly falling. Oh, that wasn't enough. I need to go one more. Let's try eight kilometers a second. Is it clear? We have orbit. It's constantly falling towards Earth. It's still being accelerated. It's not weightless. It's just constantly in free fall. Same with our astronauts and satellites. It's just the Earth curves 
out from underneath it at the exact same rate that it's falling. So what do you think happens if you go faster? You go higher. But it's still falling. It's still attracted to the earth. It comes back. And it's just a different shaped orbit. It's no longer circular. That's really all I want you to know about the orbit part of chapter 10. The rest is the projectile motion. Uh, that's what orbits are doing. It's constantly falling. Last comment. Position. Potential energy is the energy associated with position. When the, uh, the satellite is farther away from the Earth, it has less energy because it's not bound as much. So it's actually, no, no, it has more energy. because Energy is conserved is my point here. When a satellite is closer to the Earth, it goes faster like this. It has more kinetic energy, less potential. On the other end, when you're far away, you're moving more slowly because you have more potential. I said that wrong initially. But energy is conserved in all orbits. All right, your homework for Chapter 7 on energy is due Sunday, but your homework on projectile motion won't be due till next time. And we have a holiday Monday, so I won't be here. Don't come. <laughs>